This is a tram. It usually runs inside of a larger city on dedicated tracks, connecting the different parts of the city with stops relatively close to each other. This is a train. It usually runs between towns and cities on its own tracks, connecting whole regions and countries, with stations far away from each other. However, some systems around the world decided to combine these two and make a completely new thing. In this video, we'll take a look at interurbans and tram trains, what they are, what are their benefits and drawbacks, and more. Before the video starts, please consider subscribing. It's free and it would really help out. Thanks and on to the video. The first predecessor to modern tram trains could be found in the late 19th and early 20th century. At this time, lots of cities, towns and even some villages were being served by heavy rail lines, primarily using coal-powered steam locomotives. Demand certainly existed for more local service reaching straight into the urban core, but due to the smoke the steam locomotives of the time produced, as well as their noise and size, it wasn't really practical to run them into the urban core. Because of that, they had to be confined to train stations, which were usually built on the edges of city centers. However, after innovations in railway technology, most notably electric trains by Werner von Siemens in 1879, it became possible to run smaller, more local trains between villages, towns and cities directly into the city center. Interurban lines started popping up all over Europe, Asia and North America, spurred by the railway boom of the mid to late 19th and early 20th century. Interurbans were a crucial part of the expansion and development of the US, because they connected places where it wasn't economically feasible to run a large, high-capacity heavy rail line. Cities benefited from interurbans too, because they provided local service straight into the city center with clean, relatively quiet electric trains. Interurbans expanded rapidly through the early 20th century, but many of them soon found themselves in financial trouble. Multiple trends, such as the rise of cars in the 1920s, poor financial planning by the interurban companies, and the Great Depression, starting in 1929, caused lots of interurban lines to shut down. However, interurbans weren't completely out of the picture, and they actually saw a small resurgence during the Second World War, because oil and rubber, which is necessary for making and driving cars, was tightly rationed to help the war effort. After the war and rationing ended, there was nothing stopping the demise of interurbans in most of the world. Most systems in the West were torn up and replaced with cars or buses. One notable exception of this was Japan, which either kept or upgraded a lot of its interurban lines to traditional heavy rail. Some regions in Europe kept their interurbans as well, but not at the scale of Japan. Notably, the Silesian interurban system in Poland, connecting towns and cities in Upper Silesia, and the Randstad Rail in the Netherlands, connecting the cities of Rotterdam, The Hague, and Jutimir. I definitely butchered that. Sorry, Dutch viewers. I'm, I'm sorry. Please don't crucify me. <laughs> in the US, there are only a few surviving interurban lines, with most of them being shut down in the 1950s and 60s. Examples of functioning interurbans include Philadelphia's SEPTA Line 100 or the South Shore Line, which goes from Chicago, Illinois to South Bend, Indiana. However, in the latter part of the 20th century, one German city decided to take this concept to the next level. Starting in 1979, one of the public transport organizations operating services in the city of Karlsruhe, AVG, presented a plan to operate vehicles similar to city trams on the German National Railway Network. Research and development continued throughout the 1980s, with test runs of a prototype happening in 1986. The vehicles for this new type of hybrid public transport were ordered in 1988. However, tests continued, and in 1991, trial runs on the National Railway Network happened. Testing went well, and in 1992, the first modern tram train service started operating with passengers between the Karlsruhe city center and Falzheim. Passenger demand for Karlsruhe's new public transport service exceeded expectations, proving that the hybrid tram train service is a viable public transport solution in certain cases. Because of the high demand, the network quickly expanded. The last tram train project in Karlsruhe happened in 2021, 
when tram train tunnels in the city center were opened. One tunnel runs underneath Kaiserstrasse and the other goes from Marktplatz to Ettlingerstrasse. Please excuse my pronunciation, I know, I, I know, trust me. <laughs> Instead of the obvious solution of letting the now tram train free Kaiserstrasse becoming another car sewer, the city pedestrianized the street, turning it into a pleasant, calm shopping street. As of October 2024, the tram train network of Karlsruhe looks like this. It has become an integral part of the city's public transport system, and I hope I'll get to visit it in person someday. Since Karlsruhe introduced the tram train model in the 90s, other cities adopted similar lines for their systems, such as the German cities of Chemnitz and Kassel, or the aforementioned Randstad Rail in the Netherlands. Now that's all well and good, but you might ask, why would my city want to adopt tram trains? What do they do better than trains or metros? Let's take a look at it now. First of all, tram train lines reduce the number of transfers passengers need to get to their destinations. Because passengers don't have to transfer to the tram at a train station, they can just take their whole trip in a single vehicle. Second, it could potentially be cheaper to build a tram train line, since they partially utilize traditional heavy rail infrastructure, which is already built out in most of the world. Third, because tram trains partially run on traditional heavy rail, they achieve higher average speeds than regular trams. However, things aren't all sunshine and rainbows. Operating a tram train system is more difficult on the technological side because the vehicles have to be compatible with national signaling, electrification and other systems, as well as the standards of the city. Also, if a delay happens, for example because of the tram train being stuck in traffic in the city, these delays propagate to the national railway network. If these delays are significant enough, it could cause a cascade of delays reaching far beyond the city. Although this could be mitigated with stuff like tunnels for tram trains, like we saw in Karlsruhe. In conclusion, Karlsruhe and other cities in Western Europe and beyond prove that tram trains are a viable public transport solution. Now, it's up to cities to consider them in relation to their needs. I think more tram trains should be built. I think they're a great mode of public transport. Anyway, thank you so, so much for watching to the end. You're a real legend. If you'd like to support my work, I have a Ko-Fi page with three membership tiers, all of which bring you sweet benefits, like early access to my videos. There are also affiliate links to the equipment I use to make these videos in the description. Any help would be greatly appreciated. I'd also like to take this time to thank Monday's Last Brain Cell and Arrow Martian for supporting the channel with the top membership tier. I can't express how grateful I am for the support. Enjoy the bloopers, this has been Tramly and I'll see you next time, bye! Connecting the different parts of the city, which, bro. However, interurbans weren't completely out of the pic. I would like to finish this, please. Come on. <laughs> Research and development continu continued. Continued. It isn't a hard word to say. Come on. Now it's up to the cities to consider the. Oh, <laughs>